Yurt. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you enjoy the vibes, please consider giving me a like or subscribe. It really helps me out. I'm trying to get to 800 subscribers by the end of summer and I could really use your help. And with that, let's just get started. This isn't going to be a dissection of the track, They Not Like Us, or the beef between Kendrick or Drake. Instead, I want to focus a bit on why he's not like us. You see, Drake suffered from being a fly in the milk and that has led to his temporary downfall. I say temporary because we have short memories and by the end of summer, there'll be other beef or BS to contend with and he still has enough stands to survive. Now, the fly in the milk is a term that was used basically to describe a situation where a person is an outlier in a broader group. In most circumstances I've come across, it's been used to identify a black person that grew up in a predominantly white area or away from American black culture. In other words, they not like us. Candace Owens is a clear-cut example, though she is on an extreme end. Many black people that end up in predominantly white areas don't end up like Candace Owens. Unfortunately, you will come across black folk that lack any true connection and will resent any implications that they should. I peep. I went to college in Westchester, about 45 minutes outside of Philly. At some local bars and cafes, I come across this tall, light-skinned brother with a fro. Now combine that fro with the dude's hipster attire and penchant for carrying around some dense reading material, I got to referring to him as Cornell West, who's a black scholar, but that's a different topic. Anyway, I would see fake Cornell West all the time, but outside of a few polite nods, we never really spoke until one night we ended up at the same house party. I introduced myself and we got to chopping it up, but when I told him I thought he resembled Cornell West, you would have thought I called his mama out her name. Dude got hella irritated and was like, oh, because I'm black, I should know who that is? Um, yeah, bitch, you should. It's safe to say I didn't bother continuing that conversation. This fly was doing a backstroke in the milk, unaware of the great whites just waiting for him to cramp up. When it comes to black culture, there is a bit of gatekeeping involved who we decide is truly part of the proverbial cookout. And while the term is used in conjunction with non-black allies entering black spaces, cultural, digital, or physical, we also, we being black people, use gatekeeping to identify the fly in the milk. Now whether we throw that fly a life preserver or let him swirl into the depths of self-loathing is completely up to the fly. If you're truly interested in connecting with the culture, if you are truly interested, fuck, if you're truly interested in connecting with your culture, the level of criticism is so low as to not really exist. You're far more likely for someone to try and put you on. I mean, you will get clowned if you can't play spades, but that's not going to last that long. Just stay away from the card table. But there's another example I want to talk about. This case involves someone who was not raised as part of the culture they're pretending to be from but truly wants to be accepted by that community. And let's focus on a contemporary example of that type of fly in the milk, in this case, the vulture in the culture, Toronto's favorite son. See, the real problem with Drake is that he's disingenuous. No matter the genre, flow, or aesthetic, he never feels authentic. Like whatever style he uses at the moment, he doesn't even believe in. He didn't believe in it enough to try and get a real West Coast feature when he got into that beef with Kendrick, using that weak as AI Snoop and Tupac song, which, yo. Match. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Like, he might have gotten away with just getting roasted a little bit if he only used Snoop's voice. Snoop is alive to check his ass, but Pac? Yo, you heard what Kendrick said. You think the bagel let you disrespect Pac, nigga? I think that Oakland show will be your last stop, nigga. They cold foul. I don't know why you still pretending. What is the owl? Bird niggas and bird bitches. Go. That's the rub. The real issue that leads to all this beef. Though, keeping it real... If Drake kept his style switching within the realm of pop pre-boy rap, there wouldn't be a problem. But since he continually decided to lean into a street persona, he got challenged on it. You can't be a fake street dude around real street dudes and not expect to get pressed. Even though a lot of street rap is kayfabe, and I'll get to that in a moment. Most of these rappers are still from black areas or have a close association with other black people. I want you guys to check out this clip. School, like, and just being biracial but still being Jewish so I was like kind of connected to the kids but like sort of distant and when you know when kids are young they don't necessarily comprehend everything right. so it can get a little cruel and a little mean you um, get teased a lot yeah yeah I mean I, I got it you know I got it definitely. were you raised Jewish by your mom not like you know not like Orthodox Jew or like like extremely religious Jewish I, I was I mean, we, we, we celebrated every holiday and, and, you know, I actually had a, a bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was, I, I, I was raised in a Jewish household. I All right, now in this brief interview, Drake's hints at how rough it was being a biracial Jewish kid growing up in a Jewish neighborhood. In the clip, Drake tries to be in good spirits, but it's evident that he was and in some way still traumatized by the experience. 
I'm willing to wager that it led to a lot of adapting a speech and persona to fit in. It happens to kids when they're the outlier, and when you can be one of the few black kids around, it can truly be detrimental. Story time. When I entered high school freshman year, I was a bit of a roughneck, getting suspended three times by November and racking up like a dozen pink slips. Truly, I, I was wildin'. This is when my mother got the great idea to send me to live with my grandmother in Oxford, PA, which is a really small town in the southeast of Pennsylvania, about two miles from the Mason-Dixon line, and yo, when you cross that bad boy, you would've thought you'd be in the heart of Alabama with the Confederate flags on every porch. Now, this was obviously an all-white area. In the school of about 2,000 kids, maybe 15 of us were black, and that includes the biracial kids that didn't really identify as black, but yeah, you know, good luck with that. Now, the level of fuckery I went through and the stuff I observed when I was lucky enough to have another black person in my class would astound the average person. So many asinine questions. Have you ever been in a gang? Do you know anyone who's been shot? Can I touch your hair? Now, imagine living your entire childhood like that. That's a window into what it was probably like growing up like Drake. Swap out a few of the dumbass questions, but the awkward tension is still going to be pretty similar. Now, Drake is only black in terms of marketability which is another huge reason he's not like us. Whenever there's strife in the black community, Drake is nowhere to be found, nor does he use any of his platforms or lyrics to speak on black issues. Mix that with his use of black imagery and you can see the frustration. He pops in, takes what he can from whichever black folk are in his orbit, and then he dips out. But he lied. You run to Atlanta when you need a few dollars. No, you're not a colleague, you're a fucking colonizer. The flow switch up I alluded to a minute ago is proof of Drake's need to assimilate but it also shows his identity is in constant flux. Now, it doesn't matter how Drake views himself in a broader scheme, but to switch up, specifically into a pseudo-boss nonsense is one stride too far for hip-hop, black culture, and apparently Kendrick Lamar. With the track They Not Like Us, there is the question, what is like us? Now, some chuckleheads think it's because Drake is biracial, some assume it's because he's Canada, like there ain't no crime or beef anywhere but the US. But again, it's really because he's a fraud. There are plenty of rappers that didn't leave the street life but are close enough to the culture to keep up kayfabe. And I've said that term a few times now, kayfabe is a term originating in pro wrestling to indicate when a wrestler was in or out of a character and on top of that, they're pretending that wrestling was real, at least the drama was. Now Drake can't do that, or rather won't stick to any style long enough to lock in a gimmick. Now, as I mentioned, or rather, Drake mentioned, he's half Jewish, went to synagogue, had a bar mitzvah, the whole nine yards. Now, what is wrong with just being that? Man's could have been like the Sammy Davis Jr. of hip hop. Like, can you imagine Drake rocking an iced out star David? Imagine pulling up like, yo, what's poppin' my goy? <laughs> that shit would be lit. Instead, he decided to front on a hood and his bubby. That's why he's not like us. It's because we know who we are. Drake won't even acknowledge where he came from. Now I keep using the phrase not like us, but there isn't any unify us. We are not a monolith, but there are certain signifiers. You know, soul food for an example that encapsulates the overall black experience. But when it comes to blackness, it's far more about being connected to the diaspora than being fully black. There are bi and multiracial people all over that identify with their blackness and are accepted because that's just who they are. Now, regardless of skin tone, if you try to be something you're not, it's going to come out eventually because the persona is something that has to be maintained and not something that occurs naturally within a person. This isn't a Drake diss video. I don't hate Drake. I nothing Drake. He was never on my radar and pretending to hate him now is far more work than just ignoring him. Like, I couldn't name five songs if my life depended on it. To sum things up, a lack of authenticity is why they not like us. But there also isn't a specific us to be. And with that, I'm out.